Hi, Kevin at Ledoux Guitars. A couple of days ago, I got a question in the comments section on YouTube from a, a viewer um, inquiring about how do you figure out the angle that you need to make the neck taper or the fingerboard taper that you're after. And that was a really good question. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm going to do a video on that. But I want to preface this by saying that we're not going to deal with angles at all because it's so easy to make a mistake by trying to use an angle. Um, you know, from that zero end of a fingerboard, an angle, if you make even a tenth of a degree error, will make so much difference in the width further down the board that angles don't seem to be very practical and not necessarily accurate. But taper over its length is what we really want to work with. So today, I'm going to do a video showing you how to create a neck taper that you want, one to your specifications. Um, I think a year or so ago, maybe, I did make a video on making these uh, fingerboard shaping templates. This one is in use uh, with a shaper. Uh, you could also create a tapering jig that you might use on a table saw. And both of those are included in the video that I did a while ago. I'll try and remember to link that at the end of this video. Um, before I get started very quickly, you may be asking, well, why not just use a fingerboard that's already there or use a standard? And you can. There's, there's nothing that says you can't. But you may have, as a builder of your own instruments, or if you are building for a client, you may have a reason to create a fingerboard of different width and different string spacing for their purposes. My own fingerboards, my standard steel string fingerboard from my collection is one and seven eighths inches at the nut. Um, not exactly a standard. And I like a string spacing of two and five sixteenths inches. So if you wanted something different for your purposes, whatever they may be, you need to know how to create that. So I'm going to bring it down closer and we'll get started. To create your own fingerboard taper, you'll need to make three decisions. Uh, not in any specific order, but you will need to decide what is the nut width up here on your instrument. And you'll need to decide what is the string spacing on your instrument. And you will need to decide what the scale length of the instrument is. So having done that, for the purpose of this video, I chose a 24-inch scale. And if you don't readily have fret positions and the, the measurements you need, of course, you download those. Stuart McDonald's has a calculator, a fret spacing and bridge placement calculator for you. And I'm, I'm confident that there are many of those online. So, uh, excuse me, i got to set this guitar aside here. So I made up a piece of paper um, that's plenty long enough to do the work and wide enough, of course. And I struck a center line down the entire length of it at one end up here. And I hope you can see this all clearly enough. I think you can. At one end of it, I just took a protractor and I drafted a perpendicular representing the nut. Where the bridge will set down here, I struck another perpendicular at the 24.33 inch mark and drew that perpendicular as well. I moved up and I looked at where the 20th fret is on a 24 inch scale and I put that perpendicular here as well. Uh, exactly where you fall here is not all that important. Um, but I chose a fret position because it's a known point, I guess. Uh, but you could put that anywhere on the fingerboard. But my thinking is the farther down the board you can go, the more precisely you're going to be able to lay your taper out. So now that we have those lines drafted on the piece of paper, the first thing that I wanted to do was determine the, the nut width right here. And one and seven eighths inches. That's pretty easy. Uh, I just took the one and seven eighths inches 
I converted that to decimals uh, for my own purposes here, by the way, because I like to use uh, these scales. This one happens to be a steret, but there are many others. Scales that read in hundredths of an inch. These are available in all sizes and lengths, and they're very, very handy for those of you who are working in you know, English imperial measurements. Um, so I just took half of that one and seven eighths inches, which happens to be uh, 0.937 inches. And from that center line, I plotted that with a divider. And I used a divider to do that because once I've plotted that, excuse me, once I find that center point, then my accuracy is uh, more predictable. It's going to be insured pretty well as long as I find that center point nicely. And I plot the nut width right there. So the next thing I did was plotted, well, what's my string spacing inside that? And generally speaking, the distance from the edge of that fingerboard, the spacing inward toward your string on each side is an eighth of an inch, 125 thousandths of an inch, uh, 12 hundredths of an inch. So rather than move in an eighth of an inch each time, I simply took my string spacing, I subtracted from the nut width, uh, one eighth, one eighth, subtracted uh, 25 hundredths, and I came up with 1.625 inches. I divided that in half, and with another divider, I started from the same center point, and I plotted those two points. Okay, so now I have the nut width and I have the string spacing. And these numbers up here, just to kind of help exemplify what I'm, what I'm doing, what my thinking has been. So now let's move down to the other end. Uh, your string spacing, of course, will determine in the end what the taper of your fingerboard is going to be. Uh, I prefer for my instruments and for many of those that I build uh, anywhere from a two and a quarter to a two and five six, excuse me, two and five sixteenths inch string spacing. And for my own guitars, I like two and five sixteenths because I'm a finger style player. I took my string spacing that I wanted and I divided that in half, of course, and I came up with one and 15 hundredths inches, or one and 156 thousandths. I don't think we're going to work in thousandths, are we? Um, and I set that up, or I'm going to set that up, uh, 1.15. So I'm going to set that up here with my divider. And if you're like I am, some of you may end up using a magnifying glass or this sort of thing. But there it is. I've got it. And identifying that center line carefully and striking that point. Now I have my string spacing. Now you probably can't see that because it's just a scratch from the divider. But I'm going to put a circle on each side of it there so that you can get a better idea where that is. And... I'm not just going to run off pell-mell right away. I am going to double check that to make sure that I've got what I want. And I'm in nice shape here. This is real good. So the rest of this falls into place very easily with a straight edge. And I hope you can see this well enough. I hope your field of view is large enough through the camera here. I'm going to take now from the marks that I made representing my string spacing here to the string spacing marks down here, I'm just going to use a straight edge to plot those. And I suppose I could have done this before and then explained it all, but um, I've had some comments that people actually like to see some things happen in these videos. So uh, here you go, show you just what I'm doing. I'm going to trace that other one now. You could do this with one line. It would tell you, I guess, everything you need to know with a little multiplication, but we'll go ahead and finish this up. 
And I can't encourage anyone enough who's doing this to work just as precisely as you can. Um, I'm using a half millimeter lead holder. If you did this on a, uh, a piece of wood or any other material where you could use a knife, you'd even be better off, I suppose. It would be probably even more accurate than this method that I'm using. So I've traced those out. Now, there's my string spacing right there. Okay. So why this line at the 20th fret? That's easy. I'm going to go there. And since I don't know what that distance is, that is, I don't know what the string spacing is here and here. I'm simply going to add an eighth of an inch on each side of that. There we go. And then by tracing those lines from the nut position up here. Whoop, can you see that? There we go. By tracing those, I'm going to arrive at my fingerboard taper. Now, I'm guessing that some of you are already already asking, well, why didn't you just add an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here and draw that out? Well, you could. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't. The reason I guess that I did this, we usually think about the length of the fingerboard. And so now when I actually go to make this taper, I can, I can use that information. What is the taper of the fingerboard? It's one and seven eighths inches at the knot to this width at the 20th fret. And in this particular case, we'll measure that out for you and we'll see what that amounts to. And that is one, excuse me, two and 11 30 seconds of an inch, which amounts to Difficult to see, but 2.3, about 2.352, something, somewhere around there. All right. So there is the entire taper of the fingerboard. No angles required. Um, and even if I were to take a protractor now and try and determine what that angle is, as I mentioned before, wow. It's so close to 90 degrees still. Of course, this is only a math quality uh, protractor. It's not a real professional. But it relies on getting that 180 degree line precisely aligned, getting the center line or getting the center point exactly on the center point, the accuracy of the tool itself. And this is only showing like 91 and a half or, you know, 90 and a half degrees. So it's guesswork if you're trying to work with angles. So now you can draft that same information onto a fingerboard blank and you could shape this down by whatever means, a bandsaw and then hand planing. Um, you can use that same information to create a fingerboard shaping template or a tapering jig maybe to be used on a table saw. Um, there's everything I know about making fingerboard tapers, and I hope this has been helpful and useful to many. Uh, Kevin Ledoux, The Pragmatic Luthier, thanks for watching. I hope you'll put a like on the video and subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel. Thanks again for watching.